To cast the plaster bats, you need first and foremost a non-absorbent plastic coated flat surface. You're also going to need a brush or a sponge and some dish soap or mold release. You'll want some form of a scale to measure your plaster and a one gallon jug to measure your water. You'll also want two buckets, one to hold your pre-measured dry plaster and one to hold the pre-measured water that you're actually gonna be mixing the plaster in. You'll also need your molds and obviously some plaster and a wheel with a cup head, preferably a scut with the scut cup head system. So the first thing to be sure of is that you're accurately measuring your water and for this system it seems like one gallon of water and 12 pounds of plaster is the correct ratio. The next thing to make sure of is that you have some sort of a mold release to release the bat from both the mold and the surface that you're pouring it on. If you don't do this, there's a very good chance that the bat is going to stick to the inside of the mold and not be released, and you will have to break the plaster to get it out. Personally, I use a dish soap, but you can use a mold soap or a spray release if you want to. Once you've done that, you want to make sure that you have your weights to hold the mold onto the surface and hold it down. Personally, I use a chopped up bag of clay. I use two bags of clay, one for each mold. So 25 pounds each for each mold. And you wanna make sure that it's just out around the outside edge, because if it's too close to the center of the mold, it'll deform the interface between the bat and the wheel head. Once your table's set up, it's time to start mixing the plaster. You do wanna make sure that you wear a face mask because you don't ever want to breathe dust. It's just not good for you. So put on your face mask, get out your pre-measured water and start slowly sifting the plaster into the water. You want to do this over the course of a minute or two. Um, and once it all is in there, it needs to sit undisturbed for about two minutes. This is called slaking and it just allows the plaster to hydrate. Once the plaster has slaked out, you need to mix it. And personally, I use my hand and I just kind of gently agitate it because I don't want to introduce too many air bubbles into the plaster. And you want to mix for about four minutes if you're doing it by hand and less if you're using a drill mixer. Once you've mixed it for the four minutes by hand, you're going to feel it start to firm up. It's going to start to get thicker and when it hits a little bit heavier than cream you want to call it good and pour it into the mold you want to move where the plaster is pouring into the mold because otherwise you'll create a hard spot that won't absorb water and so you want to be constantly moving the stream of plaster around the base of the mold after the plaster has been poured into the mold you need to let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes um, check it periodically there will be a period of time where it's not hard like cement, but it's also not liquidy. It's kind of this weird gelatinous state. And that's the, that's the spot where you take a flat edge and scrape the bottom of the mold so that it is flat. You just let it sit for an additional half hour or so the plaster will completely set up. You'll feel it get warm, and that's how you know it's working. Once it's um, completely set, then it's time to demold, and I typically whack the table a couple of times. That breaks the surface tension on the flat side of the mold, and then the plastic mold of it just gets peeled away from the surface, exposing the back side. Immediately after demolding, you want to put it into a wheel with a cup head on it and trim the sharp edges off the bat using a, uh, just a standard pottery trim tool. The very last step 
is to cure the plaster. And depending on your climate, this can take anywhere from two days to two weeks. The drier your climate is, the faster it's gonna cure. A little bit of air movement in the room is a good idea. Don't put a fan directly on the mold, but just getting some air moving through the studio will help it dry out. If you don't completely dry the plaster bats prior to their first use, it's not going to destroy the bat, but the piece is not going to release the way that it should. These plaster bats, they really work based on pulling the water out of the foot so that you don't have to undercut. They just dry off and the piece just pops right off the bat.